So it's been nine months since I got my hands on the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini, and I thought now would be a perfect time to share an honest update about my experience. If you're on the fence about getting this printer or you've been wondering how it holds up over time, this video is for you. I'm going to cover what's been great, what's been frustrating, and whether I'd still recommend this printer after using it pretty regularly. This is my honest review on the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. And by the way, I'm Chris and this is my 3D printing sanctuary. First, I want to talk about my first impressions of the A1 Mini. When I first unboxed this machine, I was honestly blown away by how easy it was to get started. The setup process was super straightforward and I was printing within about 30 minutes. For a beginner friendly printer, it didn't feel cheap or like I had to settle for less, it just all worked right out of the box. The first few prints I ran were surprisingly good. The layers were smooth, there weren't any issues with adhesion, and it really felt like a plug and play machine like designed for beginners. Compared to some other entry level printers I've used, this one gave me way less trouble. At the time, I thought, wow, this actually might be one of the best beginner friendly 3D printers on the planet. And you might be thinking to yourself, oh, another influencer that is just so surprisingly impressed by a 3D printer, maybe they're paid off. But to be completely honest with you, I bought this 3D printer with my own money. What I'm trying to say here is I'm not bought and paid for. Next, I want to talk about how the A1 Mini has held up over time. Now, after nine months of regular use, I can say this printer has held up really well. It's been reliable for most of any of my prints. And I've pushed it pretty hard with a variety of projects. But what I'm trying to say here is the A1 Mini has kept up with everything I've thrown at it. And if I'm being completely honest, I own a handful of 3D printers and the A1 Mini is the most reliable one I've used. It's almost like the machine keeps its tolerances and everything's just tighter and it just feels like I can throw anything at it. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that the A1 Mini is actually more reputable than my P1S and my A1. And I know the comments are probably gonna go on fire with that, but that's honestly my personal experience. One thing I've really appreciated is the consistency, like I just got done saying. Even after months of use, I'm still getting high quality prints without needing constant tweaking or adjustments like some of the other machines that I own. The build quality of this thing is solid and nothing feels flimsy or like it's going to fall apart anytime soon. It's definitely built to last. So one of the biggest downfalls of the A1 Mini, or the downsides here, is the bed size. As you can see here, it's not as large as some of the other 3D printers. Like if we go on over to the P1S over here, it's just a little bit larger. Let's open this. Here's my hand on this build plate right here. That's the size comparison. And if we go compare it to the A1 Mini, you can tell it's a lot smaller. By the way, I'm 3D printing a little fidget toy here with this cool filament here. This is kind of like a matte like finish and it's just kind of like a, a color changing filament. I personally print a wide array of stuff. I like fidget toys and then I also like building like actual things that you use as well. Check out this recent Homer Simpson that we just got done painting. Isn't this thing crazy? Look at the finish on this. This is just basic acrylic paints here with spraying a clear coat over it. It's that simple and I printed it in this yellow here. I'm gonna be doing a video pretty soon here on how to paint 3D prints super easy and cheap and have them turn out really well. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on cool things like that. Next, I wanna talk about what I still love about the A1 Mini. There are a few things that continue to stand out about this printer. First, the compact size is such a win for me. I've actually picked up this printer and brought it to family occasions just to showcase how cool 3D printing is to my family and the printer works great for that. It doesn't take up a lot of space. Despite the small footprint, it doesn't feel like you're sacrificing functionality. Another thing I love is how beginner friendly it is. I always push this on my friends as the best beginner friendly 3D printer for you. And it's super cheap, like you can get this thing around $200 right now I think, just single color printing. Even if you're brand new to 3D printing, this machine makes the process way less intimidating. Maintenance is super straightforward, it's easy to clean, and the printer just feels intuitive to use. A lot of people don't know this, but you can actually 3D print things directly from your phone with these printers. Then there's the reliability side of things. I don't have to babysit this printer. Once the print starts, I can trust it and just go do my own thing. That's a huge plus for me because it frees up time to work on other projects. One more thing that I don't like about the A1 Mini though is that the camera sucks. You can see the little camera lens right here, but honestly, it's not worth even talking about because it's barely usable. 
That being said though, an easy upgrade is to just get yourself a wise cam. Pretty much all these 3D printers have modifications in which you can just add the cameras to the 3D printers themselves. Then you can link up the wise cam to your phone because these wise cams have like a super cool ecosystem where you can just get on your phone, you can have it record different things. My house is wrapped in these cameras and I love them. And this just slides right there and then that way you can just record whenever you want. That being said, a lot of these 3D printers have sucky cameras, and I wonder why. Like, this camera's $20. Like, what? how hard is it to put this technology into the 3D printer? But, what do I know? I'm just another tech nerd rambling on the internet. Next, I want to talk about the lessons that I learned after using this printer for nine months. Looking back, there are a couple of things that I learned that I think are worth sharing. First, invest in good filament. The A1 Mini works super well with a variety of materials, but cheap filament can still cause unnecessary problems like clogs or inconsistent layers. Spending a little extra money on high quality filament is worth it. Another little piece of advice is to get yourself a filament dryer. Because a lot of people don't know this, but filament actually absorbs moisture with time, depending on where you live, how moisture the air is, etc. But you can cut all that out by just getting a filament dryer and, and drying your filament before using it on the 3D printer. And again, I'll throw all the links of the things I'm talking about down in the description if you're looking for more info. We've also been having a ton of fun painting these little Pokemons. Like, they're so cool to print. I also built this little shelf over here. Everything you see here is completely 3D printed. Look at this little Psyduck here. Like, we 3D printed this and painted it. And they're just so fun to collect, create, and just... Yeah, it's awesome. Pika Pika! And what's also worth noting on this machine, the A1 Mini here, is you can actually 3D print a lot of upgrades. Like this poop deflector here, it helps deflect the poop waste. And then you got a waste bin that I 3D printed. Then we got this 3D handle up here. Then of course we have this little bracket that holds the wise cam. I guess what I'm saying is you can 3D print a lot of cool upgrades to put on this 3D printer. If you want to check out that video I've done here, it'll be found right up here in the corner quick. With all of that being said, guys, my honest review is I highly recommend this 3D printer. I truly believe the A1 Mini 3D printer to be the best beginner-friendly, most cost-effective 3D printer as an entrance to this hobby. So if you're on the fence, like, pull the trigger. Like, this is it. The biggest setback, though, is the size, the bad size. But that being said, most people find themselves, like, not needing to 3D print huge things. And what you could also do is buy the cheaper 3D printer and you can sell it. Like, the market for selling Bamboo Lab printers is really good. Hit me up in the comments. Like, what do you think of the A1 Mini? This is my honest review after using it for nine months. Is it still good? Do I highly recommend it? Yes, 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 times 100. And like I told you guys, Bamboo Lab didn't send me this printer. I bought it with my own money, no affiliation. When the product's good, it's just good. 